Hey everybody, Mac here from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I hope you're all having a lovely day and that your children are all enjoying our digital making at home resources. In my last video, I introduced you to the Python programming language and showed you a few examples and gave you some tips on how to get your children started using it. This week, we're going to expand on that a little bit and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to use when debugging Python programs. Hopefully this will let you help your children with the digital making at home resources with a bit more confidence. We're going to jump into some common error types in Python in a little bit, but first I'd like to talk to you about a couple of ways that you can help before you even look at code. When people first start learning Python, expect to hear the phrase, it's not working, quite a lot. When you first encounter problems, they can be a bit confusing, and so they don't really know how to articulate what the problem is. If they come to you and say it's not working, the best thing to do is ask them to tell you about the problem. Ask them leading questions like, what were you trying to do? Or what were you expecting to happen? Or what was the last thing you did before you encountered the problem? They might not be able to fully articulate the answers to these questions at first, but just help them with understanding what they were trying to do, and that'll probably help them put their error correct in the first place. This is a real technique called rubber duck debugging, and the idea is that just by talking through your problem, even to a rubber duck, you can usually solve it. If they can't answer the questions at all, they've probably not read the instructions correctly. So the best thing to do is to go back to the computer and help them read through what they were supposed to be doing to get them back on track. You'll find that most errors that your child will encounter can be solved this way, because the projects that they're working through are very well documented, so they should have very thorough instructions and know what they're trying to do. Let's jump in and start looking at some common errors found in Python. The first type I'd like to look at are called syntax errors. Syntax errors occur when there's something in your code that Python doesn't understand. Usually this is because of a misspelt variable or a missing piece of punctuation. You might remember this example from last time. Our simple hello world program that should just output this message, hello world, to the screen now has an error. It says the name message is not defined. Now this error can be fixed by making sure that my variable names are the same wherever I use them. So when I declared it, it had a lowercase m, but when I'm using it, it has an uppercase m, and I need to fix that. Just one letter changing that uppercase to a lowercase and my program should now run. You'll find that most fixes in Python are like that. Just one letter or one piece of punctuation and your whole program will run. Let's have a look at some more syntax errors. This program is a bit more complicated, but bear with me. Let's just give it a run and see what's happening. So it's telling me I'm getting a syntax error and it tells me it's on line 14. So if I scroll down, have a look at line 14, it might not appear obvious what is wrong with it, but a good way to check is to have a look at the other similar statements. So here we've got an elif and another down here. And you'll notice that they both end in colons. Now it's telling me that there's something at the end that is missing. So that's probably a good bet adding in a colon will fix my syntax error. Now let's run it again and see if I have any more. I've got another one, this time on line 18. So if I have a look at line 18, I'll check it has got a colon, so that's not it. It's elif is lit up properly with the pink highlighting, so I know that's a correct keyword. Now what might be happening, and this happens sometimes, is that the line above has an error. And Python is trying to find a missing piece of punctuation, and so it looks on the next line but still can't find it. In this case, I've mixed, missed a bracket. Now there's one more syntax error that I can see, and this is because of a lack of highlighting. And you'll notice print has gone pink in both of these places, but not down here. That's because I'm missing an I in this print statement, and you can see it's fixed because it's highlighted pink again. Now let's run my code and see if it works. Yay! If you'd like to find out more about syntax errors, we've included a short article below. This is just a little bit of extra reading that will give you a bit more information on the types of syntax errors that you often occur in Python. It only takes about two minutes and you can find it at rpf.io slash syntax. Let's have a look at another type of common error in Python now. These are called indentation errors. Python uses indentation to group lines of code together. You might remember this program again from my last video, which was a countdown timer that should count down from 10 and then print blast off. At the moment, I'm getting an indentation error on line five. Both of these lines inside this while loop should run together and therefore they should line up. At the moment, they're a bit higgledy piggledy. So Python doesn't understand whether the top line should be in it, the bottom line or both of them. It's confused and so it's throwing us an error. 
In order to fix this, I need to make sure all the lines inside my while loop are lined up together. Pushing my print statement back should fix my code. Perfect. Now we've got my blast off functionality. This is quite a simple example of indentation errors and doesn't really look like what your child might come to you with. So let's have a look at a bit more of a complicated example. Again, this script is a lot more complex, but bear with me, I'm gonna talk you through the bits that are important. Let's run my code and see what happens. So on line 33, I'm getting an indentation error. Now I'm just gonna check whether it's lined up with other things. Now I can see I'm probably gonna have an issue on line 34, but let's just deal with this one first. This line seems to be in the right place, but again, if I look at the line above, I seem to have an unindented line with no reason for an unindent. Indented lines should usually come after an if statement, or they should line up with the lines around them. So if I push this one in one space, we'll see that it now lines up with the line above it and it's inside the if statement, and that should work. Let's have a go and see if there's any other indentation errors. Like I said, now there's one on line 34. I can tell this one is wrong because it's underneath an if statement, but it hasn't been pushed in. So Python doesn't know whether this line should be included in this if statement, and if not, there's nothing in here, and so it's confused. So once again, I'll just push this in to fix this error. Now this piece of code might not look neat immediately, but if we have a quick look, we can see that the ifs and elses line up everywhere. So this if is in line with this elif, this if is in line with this elif, and all the lines in between are pushed into the same amount. This is a neat looking piece of code that will probably run. Perfect. We've also included an article about indentation below as well. It'll take about two minutes again, but it'll just give you a bit more information about how indentation works in Python. You can find that at rpf.io slash indent. The last type of error I'd like to look at with you today are called logic errors. The first two types will throw you an error message that stops your program executing. You have to fix the error before your program will run. Logic errors are a bit different in that your program will still run, but it just isn't behaving in the way that you want it to. Let's have a look at this program to demonstrate what I mean. This program should take in two numbers from the user and then add them together and display the result. So let's try the numbers six and four, and I should see 10. I want to see 10. Instead, I've got 64. Now this logic error is because of the way that Python handles inputs. When you ask a user for input, whatever comes in is treated as a word rather than a number. So when we're asking it to add it together, we're actually asking it to add two words together. Just like if I asked you to add together the words the and house, you'd probably put them on the end of one another and say the house. That's not how we wanted to treat it. Instead, we want it to treat them as numbers. And so to do this, we can fix it by wrapping each of these inputs in an integer casting. This just means turn whatever's inside these brackets into an integer. And then when we add them, it will do it mathematically, giving us the desired result. Yay, we got 10 this time. My logic error is fixed. With logic errors, the best thing to do is to help your child reread through the instructions. It just be that they've missed one piece of logic or one function and the code is not working properly. Help them read through and understand what they were trying to do. That's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video on Python debugging and that your children are enjoying the digital making at home resources. If there's anything that you would like to see in future videos, please let us know. We'd love to hear. Thank you again for watching, and until next time, happy coding.